Orgasmic Enlightenment, where the sexual and spiritual come together. I'm Kim Anami, and I'm a holistic sex and relationship coach and a vaginal weightlifter. In this show, we explore all things intimate. I believe that our sexual energy is life force, creative energy, and we can use it to shape our worlds, strengthen our relationships, and self-actualize. I blend the most avant-garde information from neuroscience, ancient sexual practices like Tantra and Taoism, to renegade wellness modalities to show you how to create gourmet sex in your lives. Come one, come all. How to have tantric sex. So this is a common buzzword in the realm of sexual study, tantric sex. And I would say that it was probably popularized by Sting and his accounts of being able to have sex with his wife for eight hours at a time, which is a very noble, noble <laughs> practice. I have to say excellent quality in a man. And a uh, funny story, actually, I remember it just made me think of this, this partner I had years ago, and he had what's called anorgasmia. Like he had a hard time actually having an orgasm. And he said women would get really upset with him and they would throw things across the room <laughs> at him. And I don't know if they just felt offended, like they, you know, that he couldn't come or I guess he was fucking them for too long. And I'm like, oh my God, you're a dream guy. Like, this is amazing. So you're telling me that you have sex for hours and you don't come? He's like, yeah, I'm like, get over here. <laughs> Anyway, tells you what I look for in a man. Um, so Tantra, let's see. Well, there's all kinds of different dimensions to it. The word Tantra is an Indian Sanskrit word that is defined by it means to weave, you know, weaving through things. And I look at it as being this elevation of sexual energy and conscious use of sexual energy. So Tantra has its origins 5,000 years ago in ancient India, and there was a sect of matriarchal culture, and they studied sex. They looked at it as a way to contact divine energy, to touch the divine in ourselves, and elevate the entire ex experience of sex. And at the same time, in ancient China, in Taoist times, they were also studying how to use sex as medicine and revitalization and a springboard into spiritual openness. So so I resonated, I would say, a little bit more with the Taoist teachings. They were kind of more methodical and tantric rituals are often very flowery. And I like to think that I take the best of both worlds and combine them into a way that's intelligent and sophisticated and easy to digest and apply in the work that I do. So putting a modern twist on these things. So I already had had some powerful transformative sexual experiences in my teen years. And then I learned about Tantra and Taoism in my early twenties. And thought, oh, wow, so there's actually a framework that already exists for the kinds of experiences that I'm having and the way that I look at sexuality and my sexual energy, which is, is that there's a divine portal opening up that I have access to and I come through the other side of that feeling reborn, right? This is the definition of La Petite Mort, the little death and rebirth. And even that term really spoke to me because that's how I would feel coming out of these cataclysms cataclysmic, cervical orgasm, life-changing experiences. And this was, yes, at a young age, early in my sexual explorations, having very deep experiences like that. And of course, there's no reflection of that kind of viewpoint in typical Western culture and writings, which is like, if you can't prove it in a lab, it doesn't exist, which is only to say, you are probably the most underfucked person in the world. And so is your partner. If all you do all day is trying to prove <laughs> that orgasms don't exist. So it was very gratifying to see, all right, so, hey, this has been, this is reaffirming what I already instinctively know. And I feel like a lot of people, when they come to my work, that's what happens to them is that all it's doing, maybe a little more than that, but it's reaffirming what they already know to be true deep down. It's just that they've been fed these, this conflicting programming about what sexuality is, that somehow it's dirty and bad and nasty. And then there's all of these myths in religions and other stories about how 
sex is really the origin of all evil in the world. Like, it's just so fucked up. And you can see very clearly the human hand in the writing of this narrative, right? Like, that's not coming from the divine. And this is what I love about these ancient practices is that they recognize that an elevated... And when I say elevated, I mean gourmet sex. And when I say gourmet sex, I mean an experience of sex that's multidimensional, meaning you bring all parts of you, mind, emotion, body, spirit, energy, to the table, to the bed, to the back of the car, wherever you like, and you show up. You're vulnerable, you're open, you surrender. To me, that is the most powerful use of sexual energy. That's how you really tap into the incredible life giving force that it is, is when you're using it from this higher state of consciousness rather than just as a way to put yourself to sleep at night, right? So to me, there's a really big difference. And in all of my work, as much as I encourage people to have lots of sex, I want them to have high quality, gourmet, multi-dimensional, surrendered, life-changing sex. And there's a huge difference, right? Is this thing giving you energy or taking away energy? Does it make you feel like you want to run a marathon after or that you want to pass out? So these are big differences to me. And that that's really the key though, is liberating the power of sexual energy through conscious application. And one woman, or actually years ago, it was a hairdresser of mine. And she said, isn't, doesn't Tantra just mean being really present while you're humping? And I was like, well, yeah, it's a little, you know, maybe coarser way to describe it than I would normally like to say. But that's really the essence of these practices is to bring our conscious awareness to the fact that with every single act, we have the power to create new life. And that makes it a sacred, oh, incredible experience if we're tuned into that. And there's this theme in modern culture to as like throw away sex and casual sex is totally fine and cool. And like I have no moral skin in that game, right? That's not where I'm coming from. It's more like by denigrating this or dismissing it as being insignificant and no big deal, we aren't really owning the power of what sex can give us and what it can birth in us as individuals in our lives out, you know, stretching out to every facet of our lives lives from our career, our children, our work, our finances, our environment, how we show up and give back to the world, our gifts. And of course, in our intimate relationship, right? We, we up the ante tenfold or even a hundredfold. We, we extend ourselves into the territory of being able to quantum leap. And I would say pretty much bend time and space because we've latched onto that energy, right? The energy that creates new life. We are completely in sync with that and giving it the proper attention and reverence that it's due. So all of this is really describing what Tantra is, which is again, like this idea of being conscious and taking to the highest possible use, how we apply ourselves in the sexual realm. So I would say that your main tools for practicing Tantra are really about practicing presence and staying deeply connected throughout the experience. Because I believe like dancing or getting into a flow when you're surfing, the idea of getting in the zone, when you get into the zone, the experience begins to guide you and lead you into unseen realms of the universe. That's how powerful it is, right? That's why we, we talk so in, you know, reverently about the idea of getting into the zone, because that's what it does. I think we tap into some kind of flow of the universe and then it lifts us, it carries us, it moves us, right? That's the art of surfing is when you line yourself up to catch a wave, you get in the right spot, you paddle. And that in itself is a whole art and learning experience to even be able to do that. And then you get up and you ride it. And then it's like, who's riding who? You're riding it, but it's propelling you and you're in sync together. And there is this, I'm going off in tangents, surf tangents, but that's good. There's this amazing, um, interview with Jerry Lopez, who's known as the King of pipeline, like one of the most respected and poetic surfers to ever exist. And he talks about having this synergy with the wave 
Like he, he's like, people would look at him and he would like just have this incredible harmony with what's considered to be and is one of the fiercest waves on the planet. Like that's where every surfer who wants to make it has to go to pipeline and prove themselves. So there's this footage of him and he's talking about how he'd be out there and just completely open up to her, right? This was this entity presence like, like of the wave and that she would then basically give him waves like she would show up to where he was and offer herself to him right and that he would get up and then just ride these artistic symphonies of a wave and I, you know it's similar to that like getting into the heart of something so the whole aim of tantra is to get into the heart of of your spiritual sexual self and and to me your sexual self, but your spirituality is within that. Like to me, they're one and the same. I don't separate sex and spirit. To me, sexuality and spirituality are pretty much the same or very similar ideas and experiences, right? You're opening up to a power greater than yourself and you're tuning into that flow. So, you know, what then the big goal is presence and connection and people check out sexually all the time right most people have numb genitals because of unresolved trauma fear of intimacy and vulnerability and all of these things the issues in our tissues is something that Wim Hof says and I fully love that expression because it's the idea that all of the things that we don't look at that we suppress we try to store away there is no lying on the body right western medicine would try to have you believe that there's absolutely no connection between your emotional mental states and then what later shows up in your body as a physical ailment it manifests as that right as your higher self giving you a sign that something's wrong and no 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 relief nothing to see here keep moving such bullshit and the truth is that your body is constantly communicating to you and so when we don't work on our shit then and I'll talk about that shortly all of these things get lodged in the body as blockages stuck energy and if you don't clear those things they end up showing up as ailments down the road down the line and any kind of ailment in the reproductive organs male or female is always always connected to stuck and stagnant sexual energy and that ranges from fertility issues to menstrual issues to impotency issues all of the above growths cyst every single thing is related to stuck sexual energy so you have an entire culture that's pretty much been traumatized or suppressed sexually right so everyone has some work to do and that's what my work is all about like one of the main things that i talk about all the time is the importance of clearing blocks right so old blocks new blocks long-standing blocks and daily blocks so by old i mean stuff that's built up over years of being in a relationship if you've got a 5 10 15 20 30 year old relationship odds are you've got stuff that you have tried to throw underneath the carpet and not examine and just try to swallow and get on with it but again the body and the canvas of your bed and your relationship they don't forget <laughs> they don't lie so they will show up as speaking in low libido or <clears throat> decreased lubrication or somebody ejaculating too quickly all of these things are then symptomatic of stuff that hasn't been dealt with and it shows up in the body and then new issues could just be i give this example a lot like say you have an argument at breakfast time and then you don't really deal with it you don't get to the bottom of it you walk away still feeling disgruntled and then you try to have sex with each other in the evening at bedtime and somebody's not wet somebody's not that hard or comes in two minutes and it's you know, most people wouldn't make a connection between the fact that they had unresolved stuff, they didn't feng shui the space within their energy fields together, and then that shows up in their bed, right? Like direct connection. So I talk about having a clean as you go policy where you're constantly trying to keep those lines of communication open and express your feelings, express your truth, express when something's bothering you. You know, I teach a lot, like say in my coming together salon of how to do that in a way that's healthy and loving and not triggering the other person back into defense, right? We want to try to come together in a way that is supportive and loving and creating space for people 
people to have realizations about their blind spots and then to help each other see them, illuminate them and love and fuck our way through them. So the other really important aspect to that is to awaken the genitals. Like I said, most people have numb genitals. And so that's why I'm such a big proponent of exercising those genitalia. So for women, vaginal kung fu, using a yoni egg. And for men, in my sexual mastery for men salon, I teach cock lengthening, strengthening exercises. And... I also have um, recommend yoni massage and lingo massage. So doing conscious healing massages on each other. And I have great videos about that in my YouTube channel. And I also go into full length massage techniques for those in my coming together salon. But this is a beautiful way to lavish love and attention on the core, the essence of your partner and help them to really inhabit that part of themselves because your duty as your partner is to love your partner up so much that they start to understand the power of who they are. That is your job. That is your mission should you accept it as a lover is to love the fuck out of your partner and to fuck them into loving themselves and you right? This is, these are the tools that we have is to deepen these experiences with each other and having deeper orgasms. So orgasms for enlightenment, that's what we're all about right here. And I believe that orgasms ought to, and can be even with every encounter life-changing and no, I'm not being hyperbolic because in these deeper experiences of orgasm, like say vaginal orgasms in women, G-spot and cervical, these are, they do, they're life changing because we get beyond the ego. We, we, ex we ascend into this territory of the upper chakras and principally the crown chakra. And we then shed pieces of our ego, things that have been put upon us, conditioning, programming, and they fall away. They fall away and they don't come back. And that right there is one of my main reasons for all of the work that I do is that deep connected sexuality is a massive personal growth tool and completely overlooked, right? Most people would never think of that, right? Sex is really just about getting to orgasm as fast as you can. No, it's definitely, definitely not, you know? And I, I feel like that's the opposite of everything that I teach, right? And so we'll talk more about that, but you know, really it's expanding that. And for men, it's having um, extended orgasms, like being able to go for hours at a time, have conscious control of their sexuality, and even separate orgasm from ejaculation. These are the higher levels of enlightening orgasms, right? And having those experiences truly feels like you're being reborn. You, Like I said, you shed pieces of yourself that you took on and now are letting go of. And somehow, the other thing is like at a, at a more biochemical scientific level is that when you have deep orgasms, you reset your autonomic nervous system. And this is one of the most powerful resets that you can do. It essentially, it's like a computer reboot, right? Like when you wipe everything clean, all of the <laughs> viruses, and that's about the only legitimate virus there really is, is on a computer created by someone who then gives you a product to fix it. <laughs> Anyway, other topic, I'll do another podcast on that whole subject. Um, but let's say you want to wipe out the stuff that's accumulated on your computer and you do that through um, whatever, you reset it right back to its original factory settings. And that's really what these orgasms are doing is they're helping you to fully release. All right, so during your sexual encounters, ways to get connected and stay connected are some of these. First off would be breathing. And I spoke about this last week in the energy, sex, and orgasms video because it's very, very important. You want to be breathing throughout your sexual encounter and especially as you get close to orgasm. And the more that you breathe prior to orgasm, on the edge of orgasm, you start to expand what is for most people a few seconds, right? A few seconds of like uh, pulse, pulse, contract, contract. 
and then it's over, right? And then there's a decline of energy. But in a tantric encounter, you get to that edge, you breathe and you breathe and you breathe. And that moment of pre-orgasm gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And it begins to bleed into an experience of orgasm that then gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It's this massive, full body, full being, multi-dimensional ongoing orgasm and you can have orgasms that last for hours and even days and all of this is born out of your breath your breath also has the benefit not only of moving and recirculating sexual energy in the body so instead of just dumping it and ejecting it out at the genitals we are disseminating that energy throughout our entire system and giving ourselves a full body bliss orgasm but the other thing that breath, breath does is it brings you present, right? It brings you inside of your body. It's kind of like using a mantra in meditation. It's something for you to hold on to and keep connected. And I get, went through some breathing exercises last week as well. And most of my free video series have breathing techniques that you can take a look at. So for the Well Fucked Woman Salon, Sexual Mastery for Men, and Coming Together, I've got free video series that are on my website under salons. And then you sign up for these series and each of them walk you through these breathing techniques that you can use in this, you know, that night. So eye contact is another one. And I also spoke about this last week in the Energy, Sex and Orgasms podcast. Eye contact really is like the windows of the soul. There's no hiding, right? There's no way for you to check out and escape and think about your grocery list or sneak in a porn fantasy along the way. You have to be fully, completely present and seen by your partner. So it's another way that keeps you present and it's also another way that deepens your connection. Same thing with the breath. When you start to breathe deeply and synchronize your breathing together, you'll find that it harmonizes and merges is your energy fields and that's the name of the game so i would suggest keeping eye contact as much as you can throughout the sexual encounter and don't make it too tedious and don't do it in a position like doggy style i've had to go to quite a few chiropractic visits because i just didn't learn my lesson and would turn around and walk in with ptss or post-traumatic sex syndrome from trying to crane my neck back during the act so not in that position, but in any face-to-face -face position, I would recommend that you do it. Even if it feels uncomfortable, it probably will feel uncomfortable. It's bizarrely and remarkably one of the things that is hardest for us to do, and that's being seen, right? Really opening ourselves up, not distracting, not checking out, but being seen. And that is one of the most healing things that you can do in the sexual experience. So the other thing to do would be to slow down. One of the most profound sexual experiences of my life was on a six day sex date that I had. So we went away for six days and we were in this secluded off the grid, you know, kind of outdoor barefoot luxury type living place. It was so beautiful. And we were, you know, cut off from the rest of the world. There was, this was back in the day, we barely had any Wi-Fi. You had to go down to the, you know, kind of eating area to get some. And so we were pretty removed from our day-to-day -day lives. And we had foreplay for about three or four days, not minutes, not hours, days before we even had penetration and intercourse. And we'd had it before in our relationship, but somehow we just both lapsed into this space of spreading out the entire encounter. So there was lots and lots and lots of massage and touch and touching near and around genitals, but not even touching genitals for at least two and maybe three days. It was lots and lots of warm up and massage and like teasing, but delightful teasing where you would get so turned on and so wet and so aroused by all of the touch in these areas, around these areas, but not directly on them. And it really did have this whole quality of making love. Like that's a phrase that it's a throwaway phrase. We use it all the time, but to actually make love, to think that in your encounters, you are creating, you are generating the tangible substance of love. So this was totally, totally life-changing. And you know, through that. So eventually when we did have sex, we were doing it for hours. We would stay up all night and 
many hours in the day and we would just go down to get a bite to eat. We would go swim in the ocean. I think we did the occasional yoga class just to give our legs a stretch out, especially me you know, holding open the thighs. <laughs> Good to go stretch those babies out a little bit. And yeah, and then I... Yeah, look, my heart was so open, my being was so open, all of the things that I talk about where you come to this place of full self-possession and love and embodiment and, and, and being the highest version of yourself. So coming from this place of compassion and understanding and truth and connection and being able to just go with the flow in all areas of your life, like whatever comes at you, you just have an answer. You have, you like you reach up into the ethers and you grab your answer effortlessly right? And that's the key thing is that you're literally born out like Venus arising out of that shell and you are a new being. And like I said, you don't go back. You are permanently altered from these experiences. And you walk out into the world and like I said, then that energy wraps itself around you for days. You can physically tune into it as arousal, like a fluttering in the clitoris or even just spontaneously have another orgasm. And that love, that connection is amplified and you develop more of a psychic connection where you start to tune in to the other person's thinking. And I talked about this last week as well their thoughts, their feelings, like you're about to call them and they call you or whatever, like all of these manifestations of a telepathic connection that we don't think anymore that we're capable of because we've relegated that part of our brains to email (laughs) instead of cultivating that within, right? I'm very passionate about all of this undiscovered potential of the mind and body and spirit. And that's one of the things I've noticed when I've gotten very, very close to people is that that becomes much stronger or the idea of communicating in other messages, right? So let's say, I don't know, you're, there's like maybe a phrase that's kind of a catchphrase for you or a song. Maybe you guys have a song that's your song. And when you're feeling really passionate or thinking about your partner, you could just get into the car and boom, that song comes on. Those kinds of things. You know what I'm talking about. They're coincidence, but they're not. They're the magic and the energy of the universe revealing itself to you because you've stepped up. You've stepped up into another level of existence. So I touched on this earlier, but orgasm is not the goal and we want to expand the definition of orgasm. And most people think of orgasm as a very like a finite build, 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 get to a peak, contraction, 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 descent of energy, pass out, right? Like that's most people's experience of orgasm. I'm going for something different. We want to build plateau, build plateau, build plateau, and never really drop off. You don't ever have to have that decline in energy. You walk away feeling like you're humming. I always, that's what I say to people. Like if you don't feel like you want to run a marathon after you've had sex, you're doing it wrong. Because instead of recirculating that energy and harvesting it and keeping it for yourself and then exchanging it with your partner and strengthening it even more, you're just dumping it out, right? Anyone can just bust out an orgasm, right? Like, whoa, 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 off you go and, you know, generally pass out and feel tired and depleted afterward. And that's because you have wasted this energy. You've taken all of this high quality, incredible fountain of youth power and just dumped it. And so instead, through all of these principles of slowing down, of clearing blockages, of breathing, of eye contact, you will expand the experience of being in your life, in your lovemaking, in your bed, in your connection with each other. And so you walk out feeling, like I said, you know, all the way changed and like you're still wearing all of that arousal. Like I believe that couples ought to exist in a perpetual state of simmer and arousal with each other. So most people then would think about orgasm as a 10, non-arousal is a zero. And then when you wanna have sex, maybe you start at like a two and then you have to work your way all the way up to orgasm. I suggest that couples learn to live at a seven or eight all the time, right? So there's always this kinetic, 
buzz of desire that's flowing between the two of you, right? And that you're having sex all day long, whether you're in bed or touching or not, right? So examples of this would be just having like little makeout sessions or a passionate sensual kiss, right? Not the perfunctory peck on the lips, but a sensual kiss and then go do something else. Or you go up and give your partner's genitals a rub or even a quick lick and then you go do something else, right? Like you're constantly stoking that fire where for most people, they get to their zero, their 10, and then they go back to zero again or one or a two, right? I'm like, no, 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 no. You want to live at a seven or eight all the time. And then, then it starts to feel like maybe a lot of energy. And you're right, it is a lot of energy. You are now, instead of throwing all of this energy away, you're keeping it and you're using it. And this is one of the big messages of my work is that you can consciously use this energy in your lives. But that only happens if you're cultivating high quality energy, right? Through this kind of conscious connection, you're recirculating and harvesting this energy through all of these different techniques, and then you're channeling it out into your life. And so at the end of this, orgasm, yes, no, maybe so, it doesn't matter so much because instead of a one to 10 as your experience of orgasm, you're now from like a zero to a 100, meaning there's all of these stops along the way. And by the time you get into the territory of 80 or 90, whether you have an actual poof at the end or not, doesn't even matter because you've already attained and gotten to this territory of high level, blow your mind, blow your body, you just don't blow your load necessarily kind of bliss, right? You've already experienced all of these neurotransmitter, hormonal, biochemical bliss signals. You've already gotten to these higher transcendent places of transformation within yourself and each other. So at the end of that, the little poof at the end, it doesn't matter so much. I still want people to have full, um, ability to reach all of these places. But what I'm saying is if you're doing all of these other things, you're kind of sprinkling that throughout the entire experience, right? So the, the pinnacle of orgasm because becomes much less significant, right? It's almost irrelevant at that point because you've sort of taken that thing and then spread it over the entire experience. And then you've been fed, you've been nourished, you've been kissed by all of this powerful energy. So that to me is what Tantra and Taoism, whatever is. It's about all of these things, like such a deeper tapping into yourself, the power of sexual energy, the exchange of that energy and allowing it to permeate through your consciousness, to blast away your blockages, blast away the old ideas of who you think you are so that you can become who you really are and to attain these much higher states of love and awareness, right? If we're thinking crown chakra, divine love and divine awareness, that's what you're really Really tuning into, right? You're tuning into this energy field of the universe where all of those things are so much more readily available to you. And that's when I talk about having this sense of like my intuition is more clear, my creativity is more clear. It's because you're tapping into source, right? You now have a much more direct connection to source. And these are the secrets of sexuality right? This is another massive tool for self regeneration that every single person has available to them at their fingertips. And just to remind you, just so you don't forget, or if you're new to the podcast, there is something that I call the Anami guarantee. And that is all experiences, all people. So I absolutely do not buy into the idea that, oh, only some people can have these things. Only some people can learn to have sex for six hours at a time. Only some women can have cervical orgasms. Even if you don't have a cervix, you can still have one. I guarantee it. I I guarantee that all of these experiences are possible for everybody. And it's all a matter of applying these tools and then having the faith that you can get there. Or just, you know, trust me, if you think there's any ounce of 
believability in what I'm saying to you, then, well, I invite you to take a chance and believe it's also possible for you too. And I've had people buy into the story that, oh, they were just one of those people who couldn't do this, whatever it is, right? Like have sex for an hour, say as a guy, or have a G-spot ejaculation as a woman. And I told them, no, you absolutely can. And they went home that night and they did it, you know, or it maybe took them a few days and they did it. So I see it over and over and over again, which is why I can stay, be here confidently and say to you, this is possible for you, for everyone, absolutely without a doubt. All right, so the Coming Together Salon starts today and registration for it closes tomorrow, which is Friday at midnight PST. So I'd love to have you join us in the salon. We go through a lot of the stuff that I talked about here, everything from really deep and impactful block clearing to yoni and lingam massage, very long extended tutorials on that, how to create a conscious gourmet sex relationship, how to get to all these different types of orgasms from cervical orgasms to energy orgasms to orgasms without ejaculation, how to keep at that constant simmer in your life. I go through different types of deeper tantric and Taoist exercises for you to practice with each other because my whole goal is for everybody to be well fucked and discover the potential, the life affirming, life changing, elevating potential that comes when you come together and you find this power between your legs and in your hearts and in your higher centers and you unite them all. So come one, come all. You can find the Coming Together Salon at kimanami.com under salons and then Coming Together Salon. The Coming Together Salon is my 10 week online program for couples, although we do have some singles take it as well so that they can learn how to create a conscious relationship. And then because you have lifetime access to the program, you can always do it again in the future when you find that amazing person and check out my how to attract a partner podcast for info on that but for you couples this is the premier guide to how to really build this kind of multi-dimensional life-changing partnership that everyone can and ought to have like how your intimate relationship was really designed to be as this power rejuvenation sanctuary ecstatic experience as a mainstay of your life and your existence. Thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already, subscribe and also leave a review and send someone else the gift of a healthy libido and an off the charts love life by sharing this episode with them. We'll be back next week. And in the meantime, many happy orgasms.